James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today we're going to do a solar activity update. We're going to start out about 5.30 UTC time, which is actually be about 10.30 last night while we were taking a look at the X-Files. We had an M4.58 solar flare pop off. Uh, that's a fairly large solar flare. This came from an unnamed sunspot group, as I will show you. And it was basically facing the two gas giants that we discussed. I don't know why we didn't see this when we went over the X flares at the end of yesterday's X files. Very strange. It should have been there easily seen again at 5.30 UTC time, which would have been about 10.30 Central Time here in the U.S. A 4.58 from an unnamed still sunspot group. Now, we have an ugly-looking sun. That was followed up by an M1.04 flare, and that happened right at 1600 UTC time. Let's take a look at that. All right, Noah and NASA are early warning about sunspot group 4197, although it's a simple sunspot here. You can see it in green. It produced the M1.04 right about 9 UTC time it peaked, which means about 2 a.m. last night central time it peaked. Then we move down here to the M4.56 and see it peaked here at about 5.24 which means it peaked at about 10.24 last night. And for some reason, we didn't see it at the end of the show. Very, very strange here. Came from a still unknown or unnamed sunspot group that I will point out coming around the limb. It's an ugly situation. Our sun in the next 12 days have a very good chance of producing an X flare per NASA, although they've given today only a 5% chance of producing an X-flare, a 45% chance of producing an M-class solar flare, and that ship has sailed. We're running a sea baseline. Again, they're giving it a 99% chance of a sea flare. Ridiculous. All right, over to HMI Intensigram, we have seven sunspot groups, Earth-facing. Now, six of them are simple, seen in green, and one of them is a little bit more complex. It's Beta Gamma Sunspot Group AR4191. Now, Sunspot Group AR4197 right here, Noah and NASA came out and warned us about that Sunspot Group this morning. But the Sunspot Group that created or produced the M4.58, which was probably much stronger an eclipse by the limb of the incoming sun was this sunspot group here that's still unnamed and luckily i have that video so we can prove where it came from i wanted to go over some of the sunspot groups here's 4191 the beta gamma sunspot group here's 4197 that they've warned us about we can see the different polarities that are mixing the negative and positive polarities. And here you can just barely see a sunspot that produced the 4.58. Now, all of the large flares happened while the sunspots were coming around the incoming limb and they were facing the large gas giants, Saturn and Neptune. Now, those two large gas giants that we have a dual magnetic connection to currently earth does probably had a lot to do with those large flares that went in that direction all right noah and nasa have come out and said we're officially in an s1 that means we're in a solar storm one which are protons this is our goes proton flux and you'll see the 10 million volt line of electricity that is running through the space weather well warning sun or line if you will 
We also have some elevation in the 50 million volt line here in blue. But they're actually calling this an S1 when it's just barely passed over the line a couple of times. They're saying we're in an S1 currently. We're also in an R1 currently. We're also in a polar cap absorption event, which means we have protons and x-rays pouring in the north and south pole where the Van Allen belts don't protect Earth as well as they do in other places. So if someone were to say we were in a solar storm right now, they'd be right for the first time in a long time. We're regularly in what's called a geomagnetic storm. Again, we're also in an R1 or radio blackout 1. All right, over it goes. 19 solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We can see that M4.58 solar flare there pop off. Probably lifted a coronal mass ejection, but won't affect Earth. You can also see the more complex uh, 4191, Earth facing here. And then the one they warned us about, 4197, right here. Uh, this is going to be a September to remember. All right, let's go to 5 UTC time, which would be right about now. We see no chrome as ejection coming out of the sun anywhere. Let's go ahead and go to our brand new Core 1 GOES-19 and see if that plasma is visible. I hate to even go to that instrument. All right, going over to GOES-19 Core 1. We still have that, well, light coming through the bottom of the lens there, although this is supposed to be 22,000 miles closer to the sun than Earth. All I can imagine is they're going to say that that is the Earth going through. Now, is there plasma that comes out the right side here? I see nothing, although we can't put too much confidence in any of these instruments after what we've been through. I'm waiting for a spaceship to fly through at any moment. All right, looking at those KP index breakdown, they're expecting absolutely nothing to happen on the 25th, 26th, or 27th. I said that we have a chance of some activity tomorrow, but really we're looking at the 9th, 10th, 21st, 22nd. Those dates are really what we're looking at. Over to the WSA Inlow Prediction Center, we will check Discover and Ace. Let's get a well, feel for what they predicted here. Space Weather Prediction Center says oh, today on the 25th, they're looking for plasma in between about 6 and 7 centimeters cubed. And they're looking for solar winds starting out below 400 and ending up below 400. I would guesstimate about 375 kilometers per second all day long. All right, over to our D-Region Prediction Center. Looking for those x-rays pouring in the North Pole and South Pole. They're definitely doing that, folks, as you can see. And let's see if that flare is going to be available. I don't think it's going to be. That second M flare is available right there. As you can see, 1524, they said the peak, 1522. But that was the M1.04, not the M4.5. Eight, and the rest of today has been well just as busy with radiation pouring in both the poles over to our discover satellite well let's see how they did they said that we'd see plasma around five or six and it's generally in that area it takes a dip there to one so we're right back up I don't think it passes over, it does barely pass over the space weather threshold of 10. And then there is a few anomalies up here, 17.98. And, well, you can see the temperature rise right there too. And it's reinforced by the wind, so it might be something there. 
although it only lasted four minutes. The entire event did. Uh, over to our wind speed, start at 375, close enough. Let's start at 398. We're really here. 375, perfect. They had a bump up to 425. We didn't really see that. And now they're at 450. They stuck it out at 375 at the Space Weather Prediction Center. So they didn't really nail the solar winds. And they didn't really nail the plasma either. They said from 6 to 7. It went from 1 to 17 or 1 to 11 to be kinder. Over to ACE, real-time space weather, our other solar wind and plasma satellite. We see that anomaly right there most all the day except for that these couple of dips. We did stay between about 6 and 7 centimeters, to be fair. Not a bad prediction. And solar wind started the day out right here, 375. They nailed that. Problem is, is instead of staying at 375, as they indicated would happen, they've actually, well, they've raised to over about 450, it looks like here. Just under 460 kilometers per second. Head over to STO to take a look at the backside of our sun here. This is the portion of the sunspot group that exploded. I'm sure that there will be two different sunspot groups. This has already been named. That's 4197 there. This is a day and a half old, and this is actually coming around the limb at some point today and will be named. We also have 019 here in red. It looks pretty ugly down here on the composite. We have 020 and 021 here. So we have a lot more to deal with and a lot that's just come around the incoming limb of our sun. All right, over to STO, HMI magnetogram. I see a problem here. White over black in the southern hemisphere would mean that, well, 4197 was a reverse polarity sunspot. That must be why they're pointing it out here. And this is, of course... 4191 and this bad boy here it looks like negative over positive in the northern hemisphere which would also be reverse polarity this is what just delivered that 4.58 solar flare this was taken at let's see 11 a.m this morning so this is pretty well recently taken over to Soho, 284 angstroms. This must be responsible for that uptick in solar winds here, that coronal hole. This is 4191, 4197, and this is the still unnamed sunspot group that produced the M4.58, which again was probably much stronger and eclipsed by the incoming limb of our sun. All right, over to the EESA, European Space Agency's Euphoria. Today is the 25th, so they have plasma in around 20 to 22 centimeters. I have no idea how they got that. They have been hit by one of these, by one of these chrome as ejections. I guess this one that happened a few days ago, but it was really facing the two gas giants, Saturn and Neptune, which were at a 90 degree, uh, degree angle from Earth. Then they have the solar winds on the 25th, right here again, down below 300 kilometers per second, where they stay for the whole day. And again, they started at 375, which would be up here, and went up to 450, which would be up here. So they totally blew the solar winds as well. All right, over to the planetstoday.com. We still have a geomagnetic connection to Pluto, Ceres, Saturn, Neptune, and Eris. And we might have a little action when that moon gets behind Earth and lines up with these two gas giants, uh, Saturn and Neptune, tomorrow. I'm not expecting the end of the world, but we do have some serious situations coming up. That's going to be on the, I believe, let's see, 
on the 9th and 10th, uh, where our moon's between the gas giants and the sun is here, and then even more so as we connect to Uranus geomagnetically, still are connected to Pluto, Ceres, Eris, Neptune, Saturn, now Uranus, and when the moon moves into place in around the 21st, 22nd, could happen as early as the 20th, but I'm saying 21st, 22nd, this is going to be a really bad situation. This is textbook with that connection to Uranus on the right here of a huge uptick in earthquake activity, volcanic activity, and solar activity. So we'll keep our eyes open for sure for the 21st, 22nd. And I might go a day before and I might go a day after that because of how perfect of a setup this is. With that said, God bless you and yours. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.